Guys, how we doing? We're going to talk about how to remove and reinstall a front end loader on a John Deere. And this is a John Deere 1025R. Got a 120R loader on it. This is going to apply to the 120R, the H120, the 220R, the H130, the 200CX, the H180, the 440R. Well, the list just goes on. There's a whole lot of models that this is going to apply to. The general concept is going to be the same as well for your 3R or your 3X20 series models as well, like your uh, 3320s, 3520s, 3720s, and then the 33R, the 3039R, the 3046R too. I want to give you a few tips here just to begin with. You know, make sure you're doing it like what I am right here, okay? On level ground, on a garage floor, on a driveway, on a, on a very level pad that you have out in your, at your farm or wherever it might be. Level ground is critically important here. Next up, keep in mind, you wanna relieve that pressure, okay, after you turn the machine off and before uh, you release the quick disconnect couplers, okay? So before these couplers here, all your hydraulic fittings, these little fittings right here, these are your hydraulic quick couplers here. You have four of them, unless you have a third function going up front, then you'll probably have six of them. Um, but after you turn the tractor off, rotate this all the way around, all directions there, okay? You're gonna see the bucket and everything move a little bit because that's hydraulic fluid just doing its thing. But what it's doing is relieving the pressure that's built up in here. You would still get these fittings off, okay? So um, that'd be no problem, but getting them back on, it would never happen, all right? So if that happens to you, don't worry, it's happened to me too a million times. Just take the end of the fitting there, the, the male side fitting, put a little rag over top of it, maybe wear some PPE uh, in case it sprays, you know, gloves and glasses, that kind of thing. And then just push it against a piece of flat steel here. You're covering it for two reasons, to protect the end of that fitting and also to help kind of prevent that spray from going all over. There's gonna be built up pressure in there. I've, I've covered that in other videos as well, but just push it against there. You'll relieve that pressure and then you can go ahead and make your connection. Next, make sure you have a bucket on here, okay? So sometimes you'll see folks that want to do this with a snow pusher or pallet forks or a grapple or maybe nothing on it at all. It's going to generally make life a little bit more complicated, so make it easier on yourself. Just put the bucket on there, and I'm telling you, you'll be thankful you did. And don't worry, we're going to go over this stuff again as we kind of go through it, but the last thing is to keep in mind, you want to keep your loader mast squared up on both sides, okay? So as you're driving back into this after you've gone off and done your whatever you want to do without the, the loader on it, when you're coming back in, take your time to square up in between here. There is a little bit of play, a little bit of wiggle room where it'll kind of almost self-align or you can kind of make it self-align, you know, as you're uh, attaching it with the hydraulics. But line up, be square. It's going to be a lifesaver for you. Um, but keep in mind, I know if you guys are checking out, you know, the dual wheels or, you know, the mirrors or the saw haul or anything else, you know, even the tractor, you know, I sell tractors, I sell attachments, I sell accessories. So there's a very good chance that what you see here, I can either sell you or I can give you a discount code when you can go buy it on another manufacturer's website, or you can get it on Amazon. And I have links to those as well. I have a whole Amazon store. So one way or another, there's a good chance that you can get it through me. Uh, just go to Goodworks Tractors or read through the description underneath the video as well. Make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't done so yet and check out the other videos on the channel too. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go through this kind of at, at live speed, just taking it off and putting it back on. You know, I'll try to intermix some slowdowns and interjections with comments and that kind of thing as well. Always reference your manual. Of course, you could just do that and, and defeats the whole purpose of this video, right? Except for the fact that I learn a lot better when I can actually see it happening in action. So I'm guessing maybe you're the same way. So follow along. Some things I do may be slightly different than what the manual says. Take it with a grain of salt. This is just me doing my thing as I take it on and off. Um, all the time on these different tractors here, but here we go. Putting it into neutral right now, just sitting there. I got it rocked forward a little bit, and then I'm pushing down, a little bit of pressure off. Flip both those brackets up, then pull back on the joystick. I'm in neutral again. They're gonna come right off. And it's just sitting there, okay? Okay, so you should be able to see the joystick here. You should be able to see this area right here. You should be able to see the tire. You should be able to see the bucket as well, okay? So those are the four points here, here, tire, and then uh, bottom side of the bucket. So basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna slightly uh, roll our, our bucket so it almost like it wants to dump just a little bit. And then we're going to also push forward like we wanna lower the loader down a little bit more. When we do those things, the front tire is almost gonna come up off the ground. It definitely does not need to, but the point is to take the pressure off of that front axle there and when we do right now, I can't lift up this um, uh, this bracket right here. It's a spring-loaded bracket. It's in place. There's an identical one on the other side. Okay, so just imagine the same thing. If you've got the tractor, you know what it is already. There's one on each side. So uh, when you can lift this one up, you can also lift the other one up. So that's the first step. 
So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lower that, that down a little bit, or roll it rather, and then push down a little bit. Oh, don't need to even do that much really. It's okay if you do, but you don't need to. Um, then we're going to go ahead and flip this up. See, just like that, a piece of cake. I did the same thing on the other side. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and pull back like I want to raise the loader up. I'm going to go ahead and pull back on this loader joystick here, and then you're going to see this part here start to raise up. And I'm going to be in neutral when I do this. You kind of ride your brake if you need to, just to keep it from rolling too much. But that's okay if it rolls some, not, not a big deal. Okay. At this point, go ahead and set your parking brake. Turn your machine off. And at this point, that loader is standing there on its own by itself. The only way that it's connected to the tractor is with these hydraulic quick couplers right here. We're going to go ahead and tackle that next. I'm going to work those loader hydraulics just like that, every direction there, relieve that pressure built up in the lines. And it is normal to see a little bit of fluid come out of here when you disconnect or reconnect these, so that'll be okay if that happens. Okay, so next thing up, after we have the tractor turned off and before we disconnect these quick couplers here, go ahead and give this a little rock. That loader there was gonna wiggle around a little bit. I probably should have showed you, but that's no big deal. You could probably hear it. Just wiggling around a little bit, no big deal there. I'm gonna go ahead and set this down right in place at this point here. Try not to make you nauseous with the movement. And then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, undo these four quick couplers here, okay? So you have four of them. You just push back on this collar. You can see it rotates around like that, all right? So, you know, just go easiest to hardest really, which for me is this bottom corner outside one right here. You know, and you can put these, they're going to drip a little bit, that's pretty natural. Um, you can put these dust covers on. Sometimes they work well, sometimes they fall right back off, but it is what it is there. I'll go ahead and get this one now. Same deal. Bottom inside one there, that's generally the, the, the biggest challenge, as you, you might have noticed. And then uh, you got this one here too, okay? So we'll go ahead and just flip them up. I'll just flip them up out of the way so they're going to be uh, not in the way for, uh, for backing out. And so I'll just back away and then back... Uh, back back into it as well and we'll re reconnect okay so we're completely separated there from the uh, the loader we're gonna go ahead and reconnect now again your mass should be center right there as it comes in same thing on both sides so at this point, I'll just give you a little bit of a look at the loader just kind of sitting there. So you can see right here, and this is a section that would attach to the tractor right onto this loader mast right here. Okay, you can see how it just kind of fits right down in that groove on the bottom there. And um, that top spring loader bracket comes down and wraps right around here and holds it in place. Okay, so you can see the loading stand there as well, or the parking stand. It's just resting right on that. Okay, it's a pretty sweet design. Not a lot of moving parts to be honest with you over there on the other side as well take a look down below this might be helpful just in case something is actually out of whack on yours for whatever whatever reason it might be take a look down here it's sitting basically flat on the ground there you can see too okay now we're already going to go ahead and reconnect this whole thing it's really that simple guys and so the main thing i want you to focus on in this first step here is this point right here the center of this perch or mast or mount whatever you want to call it you want to keep it as straight as possible kind of hitting right here in the middle as you go ahead and reattach and again just do the same thing on the other side if you're dead in the middle here you want to be dead middle on the other side too so that's where the coming in perfectly square comes into play if you come in sideways and this one still ends up in the middle but that one's you know it's just not gonna make sense you know what I mean so anyway pay attention to this point right here that's the biggest step okay I'm turning it off just so you can hear me a little bit better but I, I've bumped you know the tie rods there just kind of bumped them right into the parking stand I'm basically as close as I can get at this point all right so at this time I'm gonna go ahead put the parking brake on 
Again, I'm just gonna work these loader hydraulics just to make sure there's no real pressure in there. You shouldn't really need to at this point. We're gonna do it just in case. Well, I realized in one take I didn't, <laughs> I didn't take the parking brake off and it still moved just fine. Gosh, I'm such a knucklehead. Anyways, what we're gonna go ahead and do now, we're gonna go ahead and reconnect all of these fittings here. So we've got the red one down there. There we go. Gonna put this bad boy. That one's stretched about as far as it wants to go. And get this guy in here. And get this one right up here. I don't think that one's in there. Oop, that one is in there. And what I'm gonna do at this point, maybe I didn't pull quite far enough forward, but that inside bottom one down there doesn't have quite enough length of the hose. So I'm gonna scoot up a little bit closer to the, ma the machine here, or uh, to the loader and see if we can't get that to have a little bit more slack. Got that turned off. We'll go ahead and get it connected. Yeah, it's got enough play in there now, it looks like. So we'll pull that back. There we go. Okay, it's connected. That was a little bit harder than I thought it was gonna be. That's fine though. If that's the hardest thing you gotta deal with in reconnecting, that's no big deal. Okay, well I'm gonna try to keep my, my hands out of the way for this process as much as possible. A couple of these are missing the, uh, the color coding caps to match up, but I know where they go. So I'm gonna start with the most difficult, and this is the one I had trouble with originally. The, it's the shortest hose, just by a smidge for whatever reason, but I think I've got enough length here. I'm just gonna kinda get it started there, and then I'm gonna push back on that collar and push it in there as best I can. And if you pull back on it like I am right there, nothing's happening, it's staying in place, so we're good to go. Next up, I'm gonna take this top one here, do that same thing, okay? You can see it, if I pull back on it, it's locking right in place. We'll go ahead with this bottom one now, push it in, okay, staying right in place, and then on to the last one here, this top one, get that going, try to make it so you can see, there we go, and they're all locked in place, okay? We'll go ahead and fire up, I'm gonna rock this forward, I'm gonna kind of drive forward a little bit as we're lowering it. Turn that parking brake off. Right there. These things are just gonna come over and snap right down on there. Boom, just like that. Pull it back up. Away we go. Okay, so really all I'm gonna do at this point, I'm gonna turn the tractor back on. I'm gonna move the loader joystick. Let's see if we, uh, what did we do? We pulled back on it before to try to get it go up. So we're gonna push forward on it, I believe. I always forget, like every time, but it doesn't matter. So you can do this a million times and still forget. You'll figure it out. But anyway, we're gonna move it and you're gonna see these loader uh, arms come down, kind of rest. This chunk here is gonna rest down in that little groove there in the bracket and then they're gonna keep on popping back. You might need to roll that bucket forward just a little bit. You kind of do a couple motions there if you need to. Um, just kind of feather with it. Don't, don't make drastic movements, just kind of feather it a little bit just to get it to do its thing. And then you'll feel that uh, kind of, or you'll see it really just come right on down there. This bracket will almost open up a little bit and then it'll snap right down to place on the bottom side. When this side's doing it, the other side's doing it as well. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in low range and kind of walk it forward as you see your parking stand creeping forward a little bit. You just kind of slowly walk it forward. 
just a little bit. And I'm just, just barely tapping this forward. Rest right down there, the other side's done the same thing as well. You're gonna see, just slowly moving forward there. Boom, that's it. Then you can pull back, and we're attached. Easy as that, good to go. Guys, it really is as simple as that. I mean, it's a piece of cake. You can see even when I kind of did that whole live removal and reinstallation, biggest snafu I had there was I had to get on and move the tractor just a touch closer there because I didn't have enough length there with that hydraulic hose. Um, that was it, you know? So it's a really straightforward, simple to do process. I mean, whoever came up with this at John Deere, I mean, I give them a lot of props. They did a fantastic job coming up with this system. I really, really, really love it. So again, it's available on the one series, on the two series, on the four series, and then the three series is gonna have something very similar, still has a parking stand. It's gonna end up hanging out just kind of like this one does when it's on its own and disconnected from the tractor. It's just gonna have a little bit of a different um, attaching mechanism on there on, on how it actually, there's a little tad that you pull out and then you can flip up a little bracket. So you still take the pressure off the same way that kind of thing too again if you haven't done so yet consider hitting that subscribe button right underneath the video make sure you read through the description as well it can help you out with a tractor with an attachment with an accessory at least point in the right direction a lot of places you can get five percent off with discount code gwt so make sure you check it out below watch the other videos on my channel and until next time stay safe we'll see you soon